Hey everyone, happy Friday. Welcome to CVP Coaching's page. This is the final in a series of free voice sessions that I have been doing online all week. Today is Friday, I started last Friday, so this is number six in this series. If you haven't seen them all, they're available online, so just go right back through my page and they're even in a playlist. So you should be able to find them easily and I'll try and see if I can figure out how to post the links and, and do all that stuff. I'm really learning how to do this. It's the first time I've ever done online uh, live sessions. I do Skype sessions sometimes. I'm not a huge fan. I really don't think as a true voice coach that you can get really great results uh, going online. I find that it's very limiting because we spend half of the session doing drills when we're working, when you come to CVP coaching, and that, that seems to work fine, but it's when we get to the, hey Billy, it's when we get over to the second half of the session, which is where we sing actual songs, that it becomes a little difficult because of the delay. So um, let me know if you've ever taken and tried to take Skype voice sessions and how that worked. Uh, I've actually gained quite a few clients from people coming to me saying, you know, I tried the online thing, I tried Skyping sessions, and I just wasn't able to get enough out of it, and so that's when they came to me. Yay me. So who am I? I am voice coach Lisa Marie. I am uh, the owner and voice coach here at CVP Coaching, where we sing it like we mean it. So today we are going to run drills like crazy. I know that some of my, many of my voice clients have messaged me and said, I just want to drill. Can you just drill? So yes, we are going to drill this into the ground until we get it locked in. I want you to get to the place where if you have a few minutes and you want to work on your voice, drills just come to mind and you're able to just go on and do them all by yourself. Okay? So um all right okay sorry i will definitely get back to you about that um so what we're going to do today i have about nine pro tips and uh drills that we're going to work today and i love the word drills because i've said before listen most of us do not need to warm up our voice most of us have a good strong voice and this is the first thing that i want to share with you you know uh if you've ever taken voice lessons or been in a choir even a lot of times our directors our well-meaning directors and coaches i'm turning this because I want you to see over here you see my guitar in the background and then you see my keyboard over here and I've mentioned they just look really great in my room and I, I, I tried to take guitar lessons I'm terrible at it piano I'm getting a little bit better uh, every single day as I try and use it now we're sometimes made to feel as singers as though our voice is like a guitar meaning that now I don't know if you've ever picked up a guitar but here's what I know about guitar every single time you pick up a guitar you have to check to see if it's in tune. You cannot just jump on it and play. I mean, you might start playing and then, oh, hold on, and then you gotta tweak it a little bit. And some people who have great ears can tweak it even without using any kind of device. Now, the keyboard is very different because see now with a guitar, I have to make sure that I know the exact right, I mean, I, it's not just about knowing where to place my hand on the fret. I have to know exactly the right amount of pressure, and this is what I just could not master, the right amount of pressure in order to be able to get one note. I could strum it and it's gonna make a, a, a pretty sound. But if someone says play an E, I just, I have to have the right amount of pressure or it's just gonna sound like a big old thump or a thud, okay? But now with my keyboard over here, and I want you to imagine that this is a piano, with my keyboard over here, no matter what note I play, it's gonna play that note. No matter how much pressure I put on the key, it's going to play that note, okay? Without any skill on my part, whatever I touch on the piano, that's what it's gonna play. That's how your larynx is. Your larynx is your instrument that God designed and he gave each one of us and your larynx knows how to play. Now, here's what I want you to know that I mentioned earlier about our, our voice coaches and our choir directors, well, everyone well-meaning, but a lot of times they make us feel like we have to warm up like this guitar over here. We have to make sure that it's in tune, okay? But really, your voice is much more like a piano. Okay, it doesn't necessarily need to be warmed up. Now, yes, I will say once you hit a certain age, it might. But here's why I'm saying that. Let's say you have a big show. More than likely, you're not going to begin that show with your biggest song in the show. 
you're gonna start out with something mild, kind of introduce you. You wanna warm up the audience, and that song is gonna warm up your voice. I also would imagine that you have not been silent the entire day leading up to that song, okay? Now, what's the one exception here that some of you might even be thinking of if you sing in choir? Well, at eight o'clock in the morning, we show up and we go ahead and we, and it may, might, might be we haven't really done a lot of speaking, but even then, you're gonna run songs. My point is you can run the songs, but you don't need to go out of your way. Never panic, never question yourself. Don't worry, don't be concerned if you have not had time to do a separate vocal warm up. And it doesn't take long. If you really, if, let's say your song is a big, sometimes I get a power ballad uh, whenever I'm doing a solo with my church, Bellevue Baptist Church here in Memphis. Sometimes I get a solo and it is kind of a big song and I wanna make sure that I can hit it. So I am gonna just wake up my voice. And so those are the, the exceptions I would say to the rule, but never panic if you haven't really had time to warm up your voice. You just have to trust it. It's really more so your mind. You have to really get your mind just at that place. And you have to know that if you've put your time in, you've practiced the song, you've learned the song, that the song is gonna be great. Just go out there and give it your all. Remember that very first session, I said that there is no thinking and singing, there's only hearing and feeling. And I've talked about that hearing part, but remember that feeling part is just go out and show us how you feel about that song. That's gonna take you way farther, it's gonna cover a whole lot. In fact, you can even have errors, slight, slight errors in your performance but when you are delivering it from your emotions, it doesn't sound like an error. It sounds like a vulnerable moment to the audience and we're open to it. And we actually appreciate being allowed to see into that vulnerability that you have during your performance. So it can actually work uh, for, in your favor. Um, I happen to know when Christina Aguilera recorded Beautiful, they she was gonna race it, just go ahead and run through the whole thing nonstop. And she did that, and from what I understand, maybe it's an urban legend, but from what I understand, she wanted to go back and start recording, and they said, nope, that's it, we're gonna keep the whole thing, and they kept it the way that it was, and she wasn't happy about it, and yet the one that you hear, if the urban legend is true, that it was her first run through of just showing them her ideas and what she was planning on doing with it and they kept it as is. May not be true, I don't know, but I like to think that it's true. I think that if anybody could pull that off, it is Christina Aguilera. Okay, so as I said, we are going to do about nine drills and we're going to talk about also uh, some pro tips that I wanna share with you, okay? now. I just want to remind you that at CVP Coaching, we have clients who range in age from school age all the way up through 60s. This is contemporary voice and performance coaching. Contemporary means every style of music outside of that classical and opera arena. If you're trained over here and you want to learn contemporary singing, then please join me on the stage. Right now, we are looking at how to sing country, rock, rap, gospel, contemporary Christian, pop, and anything else that I've uh, missed. And if I've missed something and that's what you sing, let me know because I definitely want to include that in there. Um, I would also say blues, definitely some, some blues, uh, especially being from Memphis. Yikes, how have I not mentioned blues this whole time? Living here in Memphis, I should know better. I'm looking over here at my notes in case you're wondering why I keep glancing over. And also I want you to know that if you love singing and you just wanna sing better in the shower, or you wanna be a better, I've had people who come to me because they just wanna be a better choir member. I've had people come to me because they've had a tragedy in their life and they want to use singing as a way to, as a part of their healing journey. Um, I've had people come to me who wanna sing for their spouse, for their wedding. Uh, there are singers who have come to me because their spouse passed away and they promised their, their spouse that it's something that they would do and so they're, they're doing that. Um, I've had clients come to me who say, you know what? it's finally my time I'm never gonna be famous um, but if I just do it for me then I'm happy and and then I have clients who of course are pursuing this as their profession and lots of people who say I just want to be a better choir member some who want to try out for that solo at church and even worship leaders and I've had the privilege of working with many worship leaders uh, even outside of Memphis and um, helping them to grow their ministry as well so singing is just a really great way to meet some really incredible people and I've had the privilege of working some with some amazing people here in Memphis. All right, so we are going to tackle voice 
drills today. And I'm going to adopt that word drills. Okay. I'm trying to find my list. There it is. All right, good. So remember, we always start in the same place, right? We always take that nice breath. Make sure you've got room. I hope you have your water with you. I've already had some. Make sure you have water, lots of space around you. And you also want to make sure that you can make noise and not have people come busting through the door wondering if you're okay. By the way, I want you to know that when I first started singing, uh, I was very young and uh, a very close relative, I won't say who, I was I was teaching myself. I happen to be self-trained. I've never had any kind of vocal training whatsoever. I have had uh, many choir directors from the time I was in second grade. And my first memory of having a choir director pull me aside and say, I have a solo that I want you to do. And then having them work with me. And so that, that's been my training is just sort of on these, these little moments in a song and having a, a director come through and want to train me. So if you are, um, if you've never had any kind of training, you don't need voice training to come and see me. If you don't know theory, you don't know how to read music, you don't need any of that to become a better singer. Voice, um, uh, the, uh, knowing how to read music is going to make you a better musician because you can communicate with other musicians. You can pick things up much quicker uh, when, you're, when everyone's handed the music. However, there are many musicians like myself that simply learn from hearing. Remember I've mentioned, I've talked to you about how your larynx learns from hearing. Go back please and listen to that first session where I explain how our larynx learns from hearing. That's how you learned how to speak and that's how you've learned how to sing all the songs that you know how to sing up to this point. All right, so we're going to take that nice big breath. We're going to breathe in through our nose, out through our mouth, not how we breathe for singing, just so we can warm up. Keep your knees a little bent and your arms go out to your sides. Ha! Okay, one more time. Ha! Now we're going to go to hey. Hey! One more time. Hey! Awesome. Okay, so just repeat what you hear. I need to move this microphone over because it's kind of in my way. Okay, repeat what you hear. All right, now we're going to switch to breathing through your mouth. You breathe in air, exhale voice. Ah! Uh, with me. Ah! Uh, I want to remind you, even from here, come on over here to exaggeration land. What you think is really exaggerating your breathing, exaggerating your notes, dropping that jaw, ah, if it sounds ah, that is not enough. You're leaving voice on the table. There is more voice that you have that you're not bringing to the forefront. You might say, I don't have a strong voice. You certainly have a strong voice. You're just not allowing your whole voice out. You're not giving it enough room to come out. So drop that jaw. Ah. Oh. Hear the fuller sound? This isn't about learning how to be louder, but you're gonna be louder. This is not about having your voice come out at people like a fire hose. This is about having your voice come out and it goes in every direction, okay? Ah. Oh. With me? Ah. Oh. If you're not quite on the right note, don't get hung up by that. I'd rather you take a nice big breath, drop your jaw, because more than likely those are the reasons lacking a good breath and not dropping your jaw are the reasons you're not hitting the note. You've got to trust your ear. Just trust your larynx that when you when the larynx hears a note, it's going to sing it. Don't get in the way by trying to think the note, okay? Ah, uh, with me. Ah, uh, hey, Rachel. Okay, follow me. Listen. Oh, make sure it's dropped. Oh, with me, breathe. Oh, breathe. Oh, now if you're still if you're still hearing, ah, uh, that is the jaw. Oh, all right. Give me a good ah oh, if you're doing, if you're hearing a nice full sound or maybe write the word full if you're getting a full sound, okay? All right, listen. Ah, oh, listen, make sure you don't bring the jaw up. It's not ah, uh, don't reach for it. If you're reaching for it, your jaw is probably up, okay? Plus, if you're reaching for it, that's the wrong shape for the neck. And the instrument's in here. So you're not helping at all by doing that. You're actually getting in the way. Oh, big breath. Oh, 
with me? Ah. Okay, next, listen. Okay, now you also have to listen. We've talked about tones. We've talked about shifting tones. Okay, go back and watch previous videos if you don't know what I'm talking about. We spent a lot of time talking about tones. Okay, listen. Ah. Breathe, drop the jaw. Ah. Join me if you haven't. Ah. Again. Ah. Okay. All right, next. Next tone, okay? Now I'm definitely taking out my vocal chemistry set and I'm blending in little trace amounts of a head voice to blend that in. I'm not going to head voice. It's not, oh, hear the difference? Oh, ah, okay? Next, oh, listen, oh, with me. Again, oh, make sure you've got that space in between your upper and lower. If it sounds like, ah, okay, that's too wide. You got to drop that jaw. Oh, with me. Oh, very nice. Okay, next, we're going to go to our owl so that we can keep going. Our owl, remember, our owl shows us our shape to help us pull more head voice in to the end so we can go up higher, okay? So I'm going to impersonate my owl, then you impersonate your owl, okay? You really got to exaggerate it, otherwise you're going to just get coyote. That is not right, okay? Owl, big breath, really drop that jaw. I want you to make room for an egg in the back, as my girlfriend Natalie in San Diego says, who's also a voice teacher. Okay, making room for that egg in the back. Ooh, ooh. Okay, one more time. You can join me or you can listen. Ooh, ooh. Okay, now with me, everybody. Big breath, drop that jaw. Ooh, ooh. One more time. All right, now remember this owl is in the Marines. So he goes, hoo -ah, but he does it up on whatever note you're on. If you're on, hoo -hoo, and that's your range, that's great. Don't worry about it. This isn't about staying on the exact same note as me. This is about doing the exercise correctly. We want to run these drills correctly, okay? So it goes, remember, your, hoo, your owl gives you your shape for any other vowel sound that you're going to make. So for example, ooh, ooh, wah. all right, either listen or join me. Ooh, ooh, wah. Okay, everybody with me? Ooh, ooh, wah. Okay, let's take it lower, ooh, ooh, right there. Now we're going to add the wah. Ooh, ooh, wah. Join me. Ooh, ooh, wah. Again. Ooh, ooh, wah. Last time. Ooh, ooh, wah. Great. As I said, we're doing lots of drills today. Okay, we're going to allow that to fall. Just checking our time. Okay, so we're going to go. I want you to land that in chest voice. See how that wah is in my speaking voice? It's not wah stuck up in some weird head voice tone that's trying to drive itself through the floor. Okay? Join me. Again, ooh, ooh, wah. okay, very nice. Now we're gonna switch back down to our chest voice, okay? And we're gonna go to our caveman exercise, okay? So that's ah, ooh, ah. Now remember, it's not ooh, ah. You never surrender the jaw. The jaw is locked in place. Big breath. Oh, 
That's where that jaw starts. That's where it stays all the time. Ah, ooh, ah. Notice the difference. Ah, ooh, ah. Join me. Ah, ooh, ah. Are you over here in exaggeration land? Make sure you're really exaggerating that so you get the whole sound so that you allow your whole voice to come out. I say to clients all the time, that sounds great, but there's more voice. You have more voice than what you're singing with, okay? Ah, ooh, ah. With me? Ah, ooh, ah. Remember, if it sounds like ooh, ah, that's not right, you've surrendered your jaw. Okay, next we're gonna go to our guy celebration, right? Our guy, because this is how guys celebrate whenever they do something really guy-ish, right? Right, they go, yeah! Now, notice the corners of my mouth. This, we're gonna talk about scrunchy face while we talk about this guy celebration, okay? We're gonna talk about the scrunchy face because your scrunchy face is how you pull that chest place up really high so that you don't have to lean on head voice when you don't want to, okay? Because maybe head voice is not the right tone. Head voice would be that really pretty tone and it isn't a pretty moment in the song, but you still wanna come up nice and high, so you're gonna stay in chest voice and that scrunchy smile allows you to do that while locking the jaw down. Oh, we talked about the mullet yesterday. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch yesterday's video. I think it was yesterday, okay? And we wanna make sure that, but you go, so it's narrow in the back, aw, oh, and then it's wide in the front without surrendering the jaw, okay? So again, that guy celebration, yeah! Why am I scrunching my face? Because scrunching my face helps it to stay bright as I go up. I don't want it to go, I don't want it to sound covered and dark because we sing contemporary, okay? So it's nice that smiling brightens your face and it also brightens your tone, okay? Hey, Teresa, all right, yeah! You've got to get that smile in there, all right? Do that with me. Yeah. One more time. Yeah. Now make sure that you're not going, yeah, or yeah. That's not the exercise. You have to put it all these steps together. Drop the jaw, big breath, dig it out, and then Scrunchy smile at the top to brighten it up. So let's do that again together. Hey, Rainy. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Great. Again. Yeah. All right, hopefully you're getting that. Okay, so we've done caveman guy celebration. We're gonna dig it out since we're already kind of down here. Water break, take some water. Hope you have water handy. Okay, digging it out. Oh, we did out, okay, good. Digging it out. Remember, we use our little kids' expression of disappointment, right, so that we can see just how low our voice will go. <laughs> good job. All right, so it's, ah, uh, pick a note that's comfortable, just right in your speaking range, ah, uh, and then we're gonna just drop. Remember, keep your head in line with your shoulders. So let's practice it even without voice. So this is not grabbing your head. You're going to actually let your upper body just fall, just like that. Like a little kid is really expressing their disappointment, okay? All right, like that, okay? And then you're gonna add voice to that, like this. Oh. Now notice I gotta really drop my jaw. It's not ah. Oh. That's hitting the floor, okay? I know many of you have written me and said, I'm still hitting the floor. Okay, just keep trying, just relax, all right? So listen, ah, oh. with me, ah, oh. again, ah, oh. and one more time, ah, oh. okay. If you are hitting the floor, then do this with me. 
Okay, everybody just do it because it's it's just good to kind of remind yourself. You've got to pay attention. So I'm not suggesting that when you get on stage and you have that really low note that you're going to have to go like this, okay? What the point of this drill is so that you can notice, oh, wow, I'm actually hitting it better. Oh, how does that feel? How does that feel? How am I getting down there? See, now that I know how to get there, I can do it without having to bend over, okay? So that's the whole point is notice how it feels so that you can do that without having to drop. All right. Okay. So try this with me. We're just going to go, ah, ah, ah. I'm sure you can do that. Do it with me. Ah, right. Just like an expert, like, oh, oh, that's all we're doing. You got to pay attention. What is the muscle in here doing in order to achieve that sound? You simply take that and you shift it down to here and you do it down there. Oh, Oh, that's how you get low, okay? You know, last today, yesterday, uh, a client and I, we were working on Beyonce's Halo, and there is a, a word she says, um, didn't even make a sound, didn't even make a sound. And I love the way she did that because the phrase is a sound. Okay, so here's your next pro tip. Your favorite singers, you may or may not realize that they're doing this, but your favorite singers have mastered the ability, and it's very easy to do this, okay? What they've done is they express certain words in their performance, certain words in their song, in such a way that it paints a word picture. So she chooses the phrase, a sound, and she doesn't necessarily sing it, she makes it sound like a sound that didn't even make a sound. I mean, go back and listen to it. If you don't believe me, that's exactly how it sounds. A sound. She goes wide. She, she like brightens. As, she's as low as she can be, and then she brightens it. It's so brilliant. I love it. It's a beautiful sound that she makes. Now, uh, those of us amateurs, we might listen to ourselves doing that, and we might think, oh, that sounds terrible, and I don't like it, I don't want to keep it, because we don't realize how brilliantly interesting it is when you drop it into the song, into the verse, into the section of the song. It's just so interesting and it's wonderful. Okay. So trust people when they say it sounds really good. You did a great job. It sounds nice. Okay. I'm going to talk more about that in a little bit. Okay. Let's see. Where are we? Breathe Glock release. All right. Let's talk about glocking again. Glocking applies to words that start with vowels. It is so important that you understand that the way you say words is the way you sing them. And when you say words that start with vowels, you glock those words. What is glocking? Okay. Can you type the word uh, U-H? It's not huh. It's not ya. Yeah, it's not what. It's uh. That is glocking, glitteral, whatever for my professionals out there. Glocking is the word that I use. It's glocking, okay? So I say, what's a glock? And you say, uh, okay? All right, so we're gonna use glocking to because here's the thing. Glocking keeps the air behind your voice. If this is your voice and this is air, they do not come out together. Ha, <sighs> okay? Because see what happens? My voice disappeared. They come out, the air goes behind the voice and it, and it launches your voice. It is how you release your voice, okay? So I want you to try something with me. All right, so everybody take in a really big breath and then just hold your breath for a second. Now, when I do that, go ahead and release. When I do that, I feel the air right here and it just wants to come out. I mean, like I feel it. like right now, I don't feel the need to exhale when I'm just talking to you, right? Because again, I'm just breathing for survival. But when I fill my air tank, where's your air tank? This is your whole air tank. When I fill my whole air tank and I'm maintaining my air tank between eight and 100% full at all times, as I talked about in the very first video, then when I take that big breath, the air just wants to come out. It just wants to come out. So if I take a big breath and I hold my breath, it just wants to come out. I just want to exhale, okay? So what happens when I take a big breath like that and I put it behind my voice? My voice just launches out. I don't ever have to push my voice out. It just comes out, no problem, okay? So remember that, plus put that together with this. Nerves, nervousness steals half of your energy and half of your breath. 
So if you know you're gonna be nervous in a particular performance, then make sure that you are, this is why we have to go to exaggeration land. This is why it's 80 to 100% full at all times. I'm gonna grab some more water. Sorry if I'm popping off camera, but I've already finished my water. Hopefully you're drinking lots of water as well. Okay, I feel like I was telling you guys to do something and then I got sidetracked, but if you, if you come and see me as a client, you, you know that I do that a lot. Heck, if you just know me as a person, you know that I do that a lot. Okay, so breathe, Glock, release. Yay, that's where we are. Okay, all right. Hey, Anna, breathe, Glock, release. Okay, so I was talking about how the way we say words that start with vowels is the way that we sing them. Glocking is uh, okay? All right, I didn't see a single uh show up on here. Does that mean none of you remember glocking? Oh, I hope you remember glocking. If you don't, you need to go back and watch video number two. That's the alphabet session talking about glocking, okay? All right, <clears throat> so breathe, glock, release. We're gonna breathe in air and we're just gonna do different vowel sounds, okay? So remember, today is drill day, lots of drills, all right? So I'm gonna go, ah. The glock is the ah, uh. it's not ha. My voice disappears. I wanna keep my voice present. Glocking is good because it keeps your voice present, but glocking is also good because it keeps your chest voice high. So if I go, ah, hear how there's more head voice than that? Ah, without even trying, that's right. That's right, Billy, good job. Without even trying, my voice is louder. I'm not trying to make it louder, but by putting that glock on there, Ah, it's automatically louder. And again, it's not about fire hose volume, it's about fuller sound volume and easier on my instrument, okay? I've said this before, I say it all the time, the one thing, the one universal thing that every single singer, whether they're in the contemporary bucket over there or they're over here on our classical opera side, we will all unanimously agree on this one thing. It may not be the only thing, but we will agree on this. And it's that every one of us wants to produce the best possible, most powerful, most beautiful sound with the least amount of strain on our instrument. And you do that with proper breathing and proper enunciation. Proper enunciation, because it says, proper enunciation is not just about making sure people understand what you're saying. Proper enunciation keeps that air where it's supposed to be. It keeps it behind the voice and not coming out with the voice, okay? All right, so follow me. Ah, again. Ah, so I'm breathing in, I'm blocking. Ah, ah, good. Now follow me, listen. Ah, just kind of doing an eh, all right, with me. Ah, with me. Ah, great. Now we're going to do O. Okay, let me stop you right there. I want to make sure because ooh is definitely one that we may have a tendency to bring that jaw up. Ooh, and then we get that, that, that this, this is not the sound that we ever want to go for, okay? So we want it to be ooh. You got to drop that jaw, big breath, maintain over here. Remember, all of our drills, all of our singing always happens over here in exaggeration land. Exaggerate everything that you're doing. Ooh. Ooh. Hopefully you're able to run these drills still running through all these tones and not getting stuck. It's because ooh is definitely one that's going to put more head voice. Just that tone ooh is going to naturally bend more toward a head voice tone. And that's one you might get stuck on. Ooh, my paper kind of gets stuck. Okay, so just ah, ooh, we're going to put those together, okay? Ah, ooh, with me? Ah, ooh. Okay, hopefully you're doing that. Okay, give me a thumbs up if you're having success. Hey, Eric, great to see you. Thank you for tagging someone. That reminds me, yes, please tag someone if you think that they would benefit from this video or even if they would just find it interesting. Uh, if you're finding it interesting and helpful, please share it on your own pages. That definitely helps me get the word out. Yes, right? Yeah. 
Exactly, Rainy. Yeah. Now, is that bad? No. There's nothing wrong with that. As long as that's the tone, Rainy says, you know, definitely there's more head voice in that, ooh, that's fine if that's what you're going for. That's great. Uh, but maybe you're not. Maybe you want it to be a more powerful sound, more powerful than just beautiful. Sometimes we, de we don't realize we default to beautiful. You're like, well, what's wrong with beautiful? Beautiful. Hey, beautiful is always great. But sometimes it, 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 it gets dropped down from like beautiful and it's more just pretty. Pretty, I would say, beautiful is awesome. Pretty, I would say, is saying that it's lacking power. It's a nice, pretty tone, but it's lacking power. So we've got to pull a little bit, blend it a little more chest, take out your vocal chemistry set and bring in a little more chest by going wide and bringing that chest voice up high. Hey, John, good to see you. Okay, awesome, Diane. Glad to see you're having success. Okay, so we've done. Caveman. Guys, celebration. We've dug it out for lows. We've done our owl for highs. Breathe Glock release. Okay, so it looks like it's time for a pro tip. Let me remind myself what pro tip I was gonna give you right here. Okay, so listen, your larynx, I keep saying this, your larynx, I don't even know if I put it like this, your larynx is an instrument and it is a muscle, okay? It is an instrument and it is a muscle. Most of what we are doing is targeting the instrument, but because it's a muscle and we're working it out in different ways, it's strengthening the muscle, okay? So I've even had people come to me after they've had vocal surgery and their voice uh, needs recovery, and so it's a form of um, a recovery for, for their vocal cords, and people have gotten stronger just doing vocal exercises. And it's amazing what the voice can do and how it can recover. So. Here's what I wanna tell you about your voice today as an instrument. I used to say that our voice uh, learns from hearing, and it, it does learn from hearing, but really, I, I used to say that we train our voice, that we're training our voice, okay? The voice learns from, the larynx learns from hearing, but we don't really train the larynx, okay? That would be like saying that I'm training this piano how to play, when I'm, that when I'm learning that I'm, I'm training it how to play. I'm not training it how to play. I certainly can't train that guitar over there how to play because it just won't play for me, okay? No, what I'm doing is I'm learning what it's capable of. So you're learning what your, what your instrument is capable of. So that's the first thing I want. I want you to think about. Your larynx is capable of amazing, incredible, wonderful things, okay? Your larynx is capable of doing all kinds of crazy runs. Hey, hey, your larynx is capable of learning that simply by listening to singers do that. That's how I learned how to do that. I listened to singers who did that, and I obsessively listened to singers do that until I could do that, okay? Now, here's the next thing I want to tell you about your larynx as an instrument. Your larynx, when you are singing a song, your larynx is an instrument one instrument amongst many other instruments. Let me tell you guys a story. So many, many, many years ago, uh, one of the first times that I ever sang with an orchestra, actually, I was very, I was in my 20s, and um, so long time ago, and um, I kept, I had rehearsed with, you know, I had a track that I had rehearsed with, and they had the original singer on there, and then I never had, I didn't have any of, you know, the karaoke wasn't like, you know, as prominent as it is now uh, for that particular song. It was a, a Christian song, and so it just wasn't as readily available. And so when I got to rehearsals, I was lost. I, I could not figure out when to come in. I couldn't find my cue for the beginning of the song. I couldn't find my cue for, um, you know, certain different, like at the bridge. I think I was lost on the bridge. And that was when I learned a very valuable lesson as a singer. When you're a singer and you're learning songs, we tend to listen to what? We tend to listen to the singer, right? That's where we put our focus. We're listening to the singer because I'm trying to learn how to sing what she's singing. Or he's singing. But here's what I learned. You have to learn to listen to all the instruments because all of the instruments are telling you everything that you need to know about the song. The drums, the rhythm section, that's telling you the rhythm of the song. It's telling you the speed of the song. It's telling you how to move, okay, to the song when you're performing. Uh, the Maybe the guitar, uh, it may be the guitar, it may be the piano, more than likely the piano, but it may be the guitar that's gonna do some fancy little doo -doo 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 that's gonna be your cue to start singing. And that's what I was missing. I didn't hear it. And here's why, because my cue for that song, it was coming from the strings because it was an orchestra. The strings were doing this really beautiful little thing, okay? And that was my cue. And that was when I learned that you have to listen to all of the instruments. The instruments tell you the mood 
Uh, are there violins in the song? Is, does the piano do something really amazing? Uh, and you should, out of respect for your musicians, your, your co-musicians that you're working with, listen to what they're doing. Like, really listen to what they're doing uh, and hear it because that's going to help you to emote and to deliver. If I had time, if I was going to continue this, I, would, um, I do a lot of artist development, and one of the things we talk about a lot is delivery of a song. And there's lots of different things to be thinking about when you're learning how to deliver a song. Okay, so that's my next pro tip for you. Okay, now let's do another exercise. This one's an easy one, okay? So, uh, how do you put instant emotion onto a song, uh, into a song, into a phrase that you're singing? How would you add instant emotion? Okay, uh, here's a little, a little secret tip that I've developed, okay? I'm not saying that we should be disgenuine, but sometimes like I'm feeling genuine and maybe I just don't know how to really express that. So I'm gonna give you a pro tip. So, um, you know when you're, when you're not feeling well, now I'm not talking about when you get injured, right? But like, let's say literally you have like a belly ache. I think a belly ache is probably the best way to explain it, okay? So you have a stomach ache and you're just like, ow, right? You're trying to get sympathy, somebody's home, and you know, you don't wanna go get uh, a drink of water or something to eat or a blanket or whatever, right? So you're trying to get sympathy, so you're like, ow, right? Trying to let them know you don't feel well, okay? Can you do that with me? All right, so I call this putting an ouch on it, okay? So this is, again, you just kinda, ow, right? It's almost like a little kitten growl, like a, a little lion cub growl. Ow. Okay. Now, if you got that, okay, you got to type growl on there so that I know you've got it. Okay. Let's do it a couple more times. Ow. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to open that up. So it's only at the beginning of your sound. Okay. So it's like this. Ah. 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 Try that with me. Again, ah, it can be a little tricky to, to release into voice. Ah, it's different than a glock. It's not ah, ah. Okay, so why are we doing this? What's happening? Let me show you. It's like this, okay? So let's say I'm singing, I love you. I honestly love you. Okay, I'm like, ah, that's nice. It's not emotional enough. So I put that ouch on the beginning of both of those phrases. I love you. I honestly love you. Okay, try that with me. Yay, good job. I love you. I honestly love you. With me? I love you. I honestly love you. I hope you're noticing that it is a starter breath, but there's also that catch breath so that we maintain between 80 and 100%. So in between those phrases, you're supposed to fill back up, okay? Let's do it again. I love you, I honestly love you, okay? All right, one more time. I love you, I honestly love you. Okay, that's an Olivia Newton-John song, if that helps you uh, to remember the exercise. Okay, so that's putting an ouch on it. Okay, we're going to review uh, our, our light switch that we worked on quite a bit. I think it was yesterday, okay? So our light switch is when we're going in between head and chest, chest and head, right? Okay, so it's ah, 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 ah. All right, it's kind of like a, I call this the donkey whenever we kind of speed it up. Ah, ah, We're not really concerned about making a beautiful sound right now. This is just the drill of can I get from head to chest quickly when I need it. Hey Mark, long time no see. Ah, do it with me. Ah, make sure you're really dropping that jaw, taking that big breath, exaggeration land, exaggerate this. Ah, let's speed it up. What you're doing is I want you to use the first note to launch you into the second note. Ah, see why I call it a donkey? With me. Ah, again. Ah, again. Ah, I told you today was big heavy drill day. All right, we're gonna go backward. I call this a submarine. I don't know why. I think it's because there was a movie called Mr. Limpet's Adventure or something. 
Um, and this is the sound that he made when he was warning the submarines or something. Anyway, I'm totally dating myself. I'm sure most of you have no idea what I'm talking about. Okay, so it sounds like this. Big breath, drop that jaw. Oh, oh, with me. Oh, now I want to isolate. Let's go. Oh, make sure that's in your chest voice. You know it's chest voice because it sounds like your speaking voice. Oh, that's not pure head voice, but it's a head voice blend, which is what we're after, okay? Oh, it's not ah, oh, staying really narrow, I will help you get there. Oh, all right, put those together again. Oh, with me. Oh, again. Oh, and again. Oh, very nice. All right, let's see. Oh my goodness. Okay, we're almost out of time. Awesome. Okay, so here's my last pro tip for today and to end this series. I have so much more that I want to share with you, but this is what I want to end with, okay? So it's time to acknowledge that you, if you can sing, then you can sing. And there's nothing wrong with that. And that's a wonderful thing. I don't know why singing seems to be placed in this category that we're never allowed to be proud of. Uh, it's like we have to be the one person, especially if you sing at church. I hate to say it, but for some reason there's this stigma that if I sing at church, I'm supposed to be the only one who doesn't know I can sing. Other people come up and they say, oh, you blessed me. It was so awesome. It was so wonderful. It was so amazing. And I'm supposed to go, no, no, it, it, I don't know. It, it just happened. And no, because here's why. Number one, because it's a gift from God and it's denying God's gift to you. It's not an act of humility. It's a denial of God's gift to you. Okay. That's just how I feel about it. Okay. Number two, because anything else that you work really hard at, you feel totally fine saying thanks. I mean, when you're in school and you write a really great paper, and your professor goes, wow, this is, this is great. You don't sit there and say, no, no, I don't, I don't know how it happened. I just, you know, you say, well, thank you. I appreciate that because I did a lot of research and I really spent a lot of time on it and I edited it like four different times and I just kept going through it until it was just right. That's what you say. When your boss at work says, hey, you, you, I've been noticing you've been working extra hard. You've really put that time in. You took a lot of time in that project. Your presentation the other day was phenomenal. Again, you don't say, no, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know how it happened. It's just, you know, I stumbled through it. And, you know, I mean, maybe, maybe it did. Maybe, maybe God just blessed you and went ahead of you because you didn't have time to work on it. And the grace that you just, you know, you pulled it off. Okay. And you know that it was totally the Lord. And I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is don't act like you don't have any talent that you haven't put time into it. If you are rehearsing, if you're training your voice, if you're studying music, if you're learning songs, if you're on here taking this time, I mean, even this, even during the season where we really don't have anything else to do, you're taking the time to do this. You're investing in something that you believe is a gift, is a talent, is a strength that God gave you, and you want to enhance it for the enjoyment of other people. So when people say, great job, just say thank you. Just say thank you. You know what I typically say? I give them the most honest answer I can. I say, I really enjoyed it. I'm glad that you did too. Or I say, it was so fun. It was so fun to get to do that. I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Because that's me giving them by absolute 100% most honest answer. I really enjoyed it. It was a privilege. I loved to get to do it and it was totally fun from beginning to end. Rehearsing it was fun. Getting to get up on stage and sing it was fun. Worshiping is fun. Getting to deliver a great message and song is fun. So that's what I say. I say that it's fun. So I hope that you have found these lessons to be fun. I hope that every time you get to take a stage that it's fun, whether it's a secular venue, whether it's an educational place, whether it's in front of little kids, it's before the Lord, whatever it is that you're doing with your gift, be proud of it. You're taking the time to train it and just have fun with it. Enjoy it. And that's how you will really, really appreciate your voice. Thank you so much. I am Voice Coach Lisa Marie, CVP Coaching. It has been my privilege to teach you and to have you follow me along. And I hope to do this again soon. And I'll let you know if I do. Blessings on your day.